The following is a fan-based review. All materials discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, and Saban Entertainment. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of TokuCast in Comparison. Episode... 9? 10 maybe? He's gonna, get, he's gonna start looking into that. Um, this week we are comparing Time Ranger to Power Rangers Time Force. Yes. This is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be very interesting because there are a lot of similar things and, and a lot, lot of differences. differences. So, why don't we start where we normally are with the team itself? And, no, we always going to start with the opening now. Also, this is episode nine. Uh, it, that's a hard one to compare. Yeah. Because we like this, we like each opening for two different reasons. We like the Time Ranger opening because... We have the future. It, it's just fun. It, it, we just we, we, we made that yeah, thing to go with it. We have a thing. We have a thing with it, and it was just fun. But, but we loved the Time Force because... Time Force. Time Force. Did you say Time Force? Four, 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 I don't know. I just... Uh, I, uh, anyway. I was trying to say Time Force. Time Force. Time Force. Time Force. Time Force. And it's just... You know, it's, yeah, that, it's the normal course. Power Rangers rock that we love to hear. I would have to say they're about even. Yeah. Because we like them for two different reasons. Yeah. We can't really compare them. Yeah. They're, they're both so much fun, though. Uh, yes. It's great looking back and seeing our comparison episode. You, you guys should keep watching us. They're fun. Uh, but going hashtag back... Hashtag shameless plug. Hashtag shameless plug. <laughs> Buffering. Books all the stories now. <laughs> Thanks, Anna Hart. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, going on to these characters. Red, or do you want to start with pink? For this one, we'll start with pink. So we're going to go ahead and do Yuri... And Jen. Not a lot of differences. They didn't really... No, they have a major difference in this one. Where Jen's family isn't dead? Not that. It's the fact that Jen was engaged to Alex at the beginning of the show. And then she thinks that Rancic killed Killed him, him. which actually gives us a much more solid representation of why she hates Rancic so much. Because for Don Donero... With Yuri, it was much more existential because of the fact that he sent out an assassin to kill them. Not only that, it's not. Some, it was done before the show. Whereas in Time Force, that's episode one, like scene one. Yeah. Watching all of that. It's one of the first things we end up seeing, and I love the fact that we end up getting something much more concrete to latch on to, especially when a relationship is built up like that. You know, it's it's built around. And also, a bigger issue. difference is that the Red of Three Thousand is a traitorish douchebag. Yeah. But the Red of 3001 is just a douchebag. <laughs> He's not as much of a traitor in my opinion. You should really differentiate between the two shows. I got very confused there. So you mean... Uh, Time Ranger's future Red Ranger is a traitorous douchebag. Okay. Time Force is kind of just a douchebag. Yeah, he's a douche, but he's not evil. That's basically what... He's just a sunglasses wearing douche. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like having that, you know, concreteness. That that concreteness, it just it makes it just that that much better. You know, having that romance set up because that ends up being a much more prevalent in this show than it was in time. In like in time force, the romance was much more prevalent, yeah. especially when we end up getting to the team of Wild Force. But in this one, it's just like it's so so different, um, and that makes it just that much better. I really really like Jen a lot more than Yuri. If only because of the fact that we got that. We got and, so much more. And her actress acted the hell out of her. <laughs> that was like the An old thing. co-worker of mine actually went to high school with her. Really? Yeah. Um, not from the one where we were, the one before. Oh, okay, yeah. Erin Cahill did great. As She's her pretty as fuck, too. She is pretty. She got married to Seal, who is not pretty. Anyway. Want to go to Red now? Yeah. D- just for us. Moving on. Time for us, uh, so we have Wes and Tatsia. They were very similar. Yeah. And not in a bad way, because it was a good character. It was the character who was a novice. I feel like Wes kind of... Did a little bit better. Did a little bit better in terms of becoming a ranger. And, you know, telling his, kind of telling his father to fuck off. But they were very similar because they, they took that plot from Ty Ranger and just ran with it. Yeah. And they did it very well. It's like if anything, we don't get we don't get we don't get Wes's mother, which was weird. Yeah, if anything, was mothers the, don't exist in power. Was years. much more copy and pasted between these two shows. As we said, there are a lot of similarities. 
But if anything was the most copy and pasted, it was us. Yeah, the two of them. And that's not a bad thing. I feel like Wes just did it just a little bit more. He was a little bit more believable mm-hmm. throughout that. I think that's it sort of And I think it also helped because the guy who was playing his dad was also a very good actor. Yes. I love the scene with him and Rancic. Yeah, with him and Rancic, and we'll get there. Um Next should be yellow, I guess. Or is there anything else you want to say about red? Not much. I, like because it's still just we end up getting based. a lot more for Wes at the end of it, and that's mostly because of the fact that we didn't even talk about the team up inside the uh, sunset review. Yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit here. It's fine. I like the fact that it was in continuity with uh, Gingham, Level Five, where there you the, go. the mechs were already destroyed and they used some weird time portal to bring it back. But that was cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's what I have to say about that. In this one, I feel like because of the fact that we ended up getting a team up with Wild Force, that really ended up expanding on Wes's character and how he joined. Wes the and Jen and, and Eric and Eric and just so many and not only that, great stories behind the scenes regarding that team up. But we'll get to there when we review Wild Force, just about how they didn't want to pay for it since they had that and the Forever Red. Yeah, yeah, true. Anyway, but we'll, we'll get to there. But um, we'll get yeah, to that in this review. one. I feel like Wes. And it's really, really because of that team of Wild Force that we just oh, get yeah. so much more for the character. And, and that's, that's one of the unfair. greatest team ups. Yeah, and that's unfair to Time Ranger. Uh, to Time Ranger itself. But it's just like Wes's Wes's story kept going. And we actually got to we got to see him twice in Wild Force. So we knew, you know, a lot more going on what happened with him after the fact. But let's go ahead and get on to the one that I am so excited about. Lucas and ISA. They're both cool looking pretty boys. They're both race car drivers. Lucas isn't sick. And that mutilates his character. Yep. Because he gets to do nothing throughout this entire show. Except be the cool pretty boy. That's basically his entire thing. Lucas, I'm this is me. This is me trying to see your point. I can find it. So, please, point it out to me. If you have a map where Lucas's point is, please show it to me. Give me the exact coordinates. I can plug it into my GPS. Until that time, we're so lost on him. It's just because of the fact that they got rid of the sickness and they didn't bring it over at and, all. And I get why they didn't. That's a really morbid plot point for a, a much more of a kid's show. Yeah. Especially in America. So I understand why they didn't. But give him something else. He got with Nadira, possibly. Give us something better. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, they, uh, just, they didn't do much with him. And that's so, coming off of ISA and, you know, having that really strong plot line with him and his sickness and having that be introduced a lot sooner, just like showing how the future will end up changing even more. Just like having none of that come over when it ends up coming to Lucas. Basically, all you did was just make him cool and gave him nothing to go on besides. And I mean, and kids in 2001 didn't want anything else because he was the cool guy with the cool car, you know, all the ladies. But it's 2017, we're re- now we're rewatching this in Mark Con. Yeah, it's just like, there's a whole one episode where... Uh, he was just a dated character. That was the problem. And that was his whole thing where Rancic was about to set him up on a date with his daughter. I remember the whole thing because he like took him out of the fight and was like, look, you have to look your best. If you don't have to show you, but you have to look your best. <laughs> oh, we'll get to him. Yeah, it was just like, I, I don't know. Lucas was, he was nothing, basically. That was him. Let's that was his yellow. character. Let's go to yellow. Domon and Katie. I love both of them. Love both of them. But we got an Asian man on one side and a black woman on the other. Yeah. No matter what, we're racist. No, it's just like, oh, God, I love Kate. Have let's you seen also, her recently? Let's like also remember the fact that she has a civilian power, which is different. Straight. You gotta be nice. <laughs> this is Katie. I like, I like Katie. Katie. Thank but you, it's just like, I, I love her character. I thought she was very passionate about things, which really translates over from Donald because they're both really mm-hmm. passionate characters and the things that And MMA fighter, too, just super strong woman. Yeah, she's super affectionate and everything. It's just like, I, I don't know. It's hard to pick. Yeah, with this one, it's like because they're, they're actually, honestly just like two completely different characters. Yeah, they're they're similar, but they're very very different. We're not the problem talking, is that we're not Domo, just talking about gender and skin tone and everything. No, because like, it also didn't help that Domo had that subplot of the, the romance, romance with the character and that paid off eleven years later. 
Yeah. So no, it paid off merely because he exists now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I, I don't know. <sighs> so it just it, we don't have that. It's we don't so... have the same amount of commitment and payoff and dedication with Kate. Kate. Which is fine because she's not a bad character. She just doesn't have it. We don't. We're not as invested. She, yeah, it's like they. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end, actually. We'll okay. Talk about like differences mm-hmm. in plots. Yeah, we'll go, and now we're gonna move on to green. Yes, yeah, so you have Shion and the trip. Another copy paste job a bit. But yeah. I feel like Trip didn't get as much of a backbone. Yeah, they really didn't. It's just. He had the whole. I remember that one episode where it was he and Adira were in, like they had originally like ransacked the place or they were being. It was uh, being. Well, he yeah, set on he was the main reason why Nadira stops being the villain. Yeah, between him and Lucas. Yeah, between him and Lucas. But it's just like they had that whole one episode where they had to help this lady give birth, mm-hmm. and in, in the middle of like a department store or something. I, I don't know. It's just really different between the two because they have very very. I feel like the difference Similar. between them is that in Time Ranger, he was the timid, smart one who eventually grew a backbone. Mm-hmm. I feel like in this one, he was the timid optimist, who was, yes, also smart, but he was the one who always was the person to go to when you need to pick me up. Yeah. Like, if you're not, if you're feeling bad, he's the person who's like, it's okay. He was the optimist, and he served that purpose very well. Yeah. Again, we're not, no, we're never saying that these are bad characters except for Lucas. But <laughs> they were just in that one character trait. They were different, I feel yeah. like. But it's, it worked. Yeah, like they're, they're very, the plot that they were going for in Time Force, they needed an optimist. I, it's weird the fact that they got rid of you know two of the other major plot points from Time Ranger when they brought it over to Time Force with you know ISA and Domo and what they had to go through out the show because everybody got a plot. But Shion was much more existential. Yeah. Especially when I ended up having to come to Time Fire near to the end of the show. But Trip ended up having that same thing with the Quantum Ranger. But it's just, you know. It's, it's not, it wasn't as powerful. Yeah. It just, it wasn't nearly as strong because death was much more permanent. In, in Sentai. Time. Yeah. In Sentai, death is more of a thing. Yeah. So, but when we see it in Power Rangers, we're like. Because I don't believe his planet was destroyed by a war or anything. I think. Uh, let me just double check that now because Trip did also end up coming from another planet, uh, but it's just like, and let's also um, put into effect that there's not as much many alien life forms in Time Force. They're more mutants. Well, I mean, all of a uh, SVD. I meant in compa- uh, it's- I am com- I'm comparing Time Ranger and Time Force. Yeah. Um, so it's not as many alien life forms, especially it's because in, in like the first episode of Time Ranger. Like when they're standing with like the rest of the cadets and everything, mm-hmm. we get to see like various alien alien species also from the cadets. But yet they're like mutant this, mutant that, mutant, 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 mutant. And then the org later on. We won't even. Oh, the org. Oh, uh, but, yeah. uh, but between Trip and Shion, I think I'm going to end up having to give it to Trip just a little bit more. How and, so? I mean, barely. And it's mostly just because of the same scene. With, you know, him standing up to the Quantum Ranger with Time Fire. It's just, I felt, Trip felt a little bit more believable. Fair enough. Yeah, just like, uh, like a minute amount. But, because their characters are basically copy and paste. I'm, I I'm keeping it even only because I felt like the scene was more powerful in Time Ranger. And felt, and it felt more believable because it felt more like he was actually in danger. As opposed to in Power Rangers, where one, one Power Rangers died and that didn't last long. So... Your track record's not great. Um, but, no, you know, speak, I, but I, I'll rescind that. Yeah, I'm going to play some about even as well. So why don't we move on to Time Fire versus Quantum Ranger? Yes, we're going to move to Naoto and Eric. A lot of the things are very similar once again. Uh, they're both very headstrong characters. Uh, you know, Eric is the leader of the Silver Guardians. So he was first a soldier, then he ended up becoming a leader. And Naoto is the leader of the City of Guardians. He was first a soldier, then he ended up becoming the leader. They find the the they they find the six ranger power and they but it felt less like that the silver guardians were trying to take it away from him in time force mm-hmm. which kind of in my opinion helped because I felt like that whole subplot line of him having to steal it back was shouldn't have been necessary yeah 
Because mm-hmm. like the first time you end up seeing Eric, there's a whole three-way struggle where they're, the quantum powers, you know, finally been revealed. The fact that they were sent back to the past, they got sent back to Tar. They end up going back to the past. He almost ends up killing Wes. What a shock! And so you know that part is. Fantastic. I also felt like the tension between Wes and Eric was um, smoothed over a lot faster. Yeah, it really was. Like, but I think that's also due to the fact that they didn't have as many episodes to do to do it with. Yeah. And then there is the ultimate question of Time Fire dies, Quantum Ranger doesn't. Now, if you don't know, they did end up filming a scene where the Quantum Ranger did die. The match and they also scene. filmed the final goodbye scene without him. But then they went back, and it might have been because of the fact that he got so popular, and they kept him in the show. Which, I mean, is fine. But it's just with Time Fire, that sacrifice was strong, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. They're just like that. That was a very powerful. Because they still ha- they they left the scene in technically where he dies, but he just they just take off the dead part. Yeah. So you still get see him get hurt. You still see him like laying on the ground. You pretty much think, well, he's fucked, and then he's back. Okay. And I mean, once again, with with Naoto, it's just like we end up seeing him in you know the battle at the beginning of Gokaiser. You know, they end up explaining that more or less in the Jetman episode, you know, once a ranger, even in death. But, but at the same time, it's just... But when we're comparing characters, the fact that one dies and one doesn't, I feel like shouldn't be that much of a factor because... Because he's dead doesn't make him a better character. Yeah. That just means that he got written better. Yeah. Because he got that second. Well, I wouldn't say that he got written better. I think it's just the fact that they gave him the they gave him an ending, which means we have a complete story for said character, as yeah. opposed to Eric, whose story is technically still going. Yeah, I mean, we see him with Wes in Wild Force at the beginning, when you know, before the other... Where movie. he took Eric's job, but, you know... <laughs> Sorry. They took your jobs! And then, you know, we end up getting to see him again in Forever Red, so we end up getting the fact that these characters are still I going. still love that he's in Forever Red. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. But it's just like we end up getting the fact that these characters are still going, and in Naoto's case, his character hasn't ended. So it really ends up coming down to the fact that if you prefer an arc to be over, or if you prefer something to be more open ended. With Eric, I kind of prefer it to be more open ended because he had a lot of redeeming him of to do for being such an asshole. Like he had that stuck up thing, and in Wild Force, when he ended up teaming up, it was like him and Yellow who had like that whole love hate relationship going on, yeah. and they were sort of the same similar character. Like, and, you know, the way their personality and actions came through. And then, you know, he sort of ended up helping her get over herself a little bit. Yeah. And So, I, I'm going to have to keep it even on this one again. Yeah. I, I'm not going to blame you. For this one, it's just, like, it's really, really No, and, and it's not, like, saying death doesn't matter, but in terms of when we're analyzing a character, it actually doesn't. Yeah. When you think about it. But, those and are I the mean, rangers. The next time we'll end up getting to do a character like this won't be into Abba Ranger. And I think that's basically the last time that we're end up getting a character who versus somebody who died. So that it just yeah. makes it that much different. Unless you want to compare Ghost State Green. No, he, he doesn't have anything. Um, that's a joke. Moving on. Now, do you want to compare? Do you want to compare main villains yet, or do you want to yes. save that to last? I mean, what else is there? Um, the plot, but we don't even cover that. Time. Fair enough. Anyway. So let's go ahead. Sick versus Don Bonero. Uh, the, once again, biggest issue with this is the fact that Rance's story continued to Wild Force. And legitimately, because they get to Wild Force. And he's not a mob boss. But in show, it's just like, he's fighting to make the mutants, like, sort of the pervading power. So once again, it's another... At first, it seemed like he was trying to fight for mutant quality, but then he turns more into that Magneto thing of, we're superior, we should be ruling you. Yeah. So just be it. But with Don Monero, Everything money was money, and the fact money, that money, 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 money. it's not really shown nearly as money. much, especially with Rancic, because Rancic is the one who ended up turning on uh, the equivalent to Yen, yeah, in that show, and basically just made him a robot. He had to rebuild himself, but in because let's be real, Rancic is yes has a sad story, but he's still an asshole. Because a man willingly said, your mutation is getting worse, drink this, it'll keep it at bay. And Rancic responded with breaking everything, killing him, burning down his lab. 
Basically what? what it's like with Don Nero, that especially with Gian, because a lot of their things are revolving around those. Two Rancic characters. was a more of a stereotypical villain. He and killed, Don Denaro was an antagonist. He killed Red at the beginning of the show. Who then comes back and then he's asshole. like, "I'm not dead. I'm an asshole." I'm not dead. I'm an asshole. I, our favorite scene is your presence in the past has affected the future dramatically. How? I can't tell you that. Damn it! Why? 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 But I feel like in terms of watching between these two, it's like it's just, it's really hard to compare. They're different, but they're similar because they're the main. Inter- well, we're gonna say Rance is the main villain. Uh, Don Donner Donner is the main antagonist. antagonist. There's a difference. We said that in the actual view. Because Do- and Donner for those Nero, who don't know what the difference is, yeah. the definition of an antagonist is just the character who opposes the antagonist. Or, sorry, the protagonist. It's not saying that they are evil. It's not saying that they are bad. It's just saying that they have a different view than the protagonist of said story. Now, to be fair, Don Donner is not a good guy. We're not saying that he is. But, but we're saying he's not a he's not pure evil. Yeah. He's not a he's a, not a good guy, but he's also not evil. Because he can, he, he, he legit, cares. He legitimately cares for his crime family, especially Yen, because he owes so much to, to him. him. And it's as just opposed like, to Rancic, who said "fuck off." Yeah, he basically doesn't look out him. And then Rancic gets lucks the fuck out with that said formula gets invented in the year two thousand one by Wes's dad. And again, another great scene. It's like, and I can't remember the exact one. He's like, "Yes, he doesn't want to follow my footsteps, but he's being his own man, and I'm always going to be proud of him for that." And if I knew that you needed this, I would have poured it down the drain myself. And I'm like, that's good acting. It it was. It's a great scene, but it's it's just like with Don Donero, it's just I I end up liking him so much more because he sacrificed himself to try to stop Gian from basically just causing worldwide destruction. And that sacrifice, yeah, it might have been in vain, but at least he tried. He tried. No, in terms of a better character, I will give it to Don Donero. But I felt like. It was more entertaining at times to watch, watch Rancic. Rancic. And I'll definitely, you know, I'm going to go ahead. Because this is, so in terms of bias or unbiased, pure objective character, Don DeNero, but in terms of who's more fun to watch. In my the opinion, thing with Rancic is the fact that none of the Rangers could actually beat him. No. Nope. It was up to his daughter to make him turn himself in. Yep. That's another, that's another thing. They don't, that's, that is actually a very good point. They don't beat him. Yeah. They turn his daughter good and his daughter turns him into less of an asshole. And we like the even... only reason that ends up happening is because Rancic ends up shooting her. And that's really the only person that he ends up giving a shit about. Yeah, because he ends up reprogramming Frax, who is the counterpart to yeah. him. And that's basically where the whole insanity thing started to come up, come up about because of what he ended up doing to the Not character. to mention, because she played a major role in this entire show, the daughter. Yeah. The deer played a much because she because he because the robot's book going H and he she legitimately walked up to him and went I'm I'm sorry that what you went through that's just awful and I'm sorry and it's just what because <laughs> normally with the character that she plays we hate that character especially in Lightspeed Rescue the human esque but still a monster female lead in the villains we usually hate that character the biggest thing I had she wasn't a great actress so. with Rancic is the fact that they tried to. They tried to redeem him by like saying like, but he's so misunderstood. It's like he's been shunned by society because no. he has a mutation. I'm like, he, he did that to himself. He did that to himself, and when he found somebody who treated him like a person, he killed him. He killed them. We don't even know who the hell Nadira's mother is. Yeah, like I said, there's no such thing as mothers in Power Rangers. It's just like, I don't know. It's just. Ugh. He he was a very cold character. And he's very entertaining to watch, but the fact that and then the he, way yeah, that they, they tried to redeem him in the team up that the way they handle his character at the end with the team up with Wild Force is just like you can't really redeem a character like that. This dude legitimately just killed a whole bunch of people. Don Donero simply ordered the things to do, but he ended up sacrificing himself for the greater good at the end of this. Because he, unlike Rancic, he still ends up having a heart. Rancic's heart is with they, his They body. also, like, they tried to redeem him, like, no, he has a heart now. He turned himself in because his daughter told him to. That's it. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm i definitely going to end up having to give this one to Don uh, DeMera because his story ended where it was supposed to. No, I'll give you, in terms of, in terms of objective character, we'll give it to Don DeMera, but I feel like, I just still feel like, personally, 
Rain Sick was more entertaining to watch. I'm, I'm definitely not going to argue that. And just we like, won't even begin about how they retconned his origin a bit, where how he got the ability to make weapons out of his bones. And yeah. Anyway, but the, the plot. These, the plots are very similar, but as we said, they cut out a plot for Lucas and they cut out a plot for Katie, and that really made their characters become background characters. And even a little bit for uh, for. Uh, trip because he really didn't end up doing much for it with because him. everything because they well I can understand not having two romances in one show that's a lot to juggle in terms of character development but at the same time they did it in, in Time Ranger Time Ranger and they did it very well they made Red and Pink's just that much more throughout the background and then they made Yellow's much more to the forefront because they could have done the exact same thing they could have made a male version of that character for Yellow and instead of thinking it was blue out of suit, pink out of suit. But then that also probably could have brought up a whole racist thing when you think about it. No, not really. It's just, that's what we thought it was. But at, at the same time, it's just like, since they got rid of, you know, a whole character in the photographer in Time Force and a whole syndrome in Time Force as well, it's just like... Well, they tried to transfer the syndrome shit to Rancid. Which was not. It's just like you gave him too much. You gave at that point. No, I'll give him him this. In terms of Power Ranger villains, he's still top. He's still very good. He's still top. One of the top tier Power Ranger villains. Yeah, because he's very entertaining to watch. But it's just like you gave him legitimately too much to deal with, and you shouldn't have done that. You should have. I understand that you wanted to give it to the villain to make him either seem more relatable or. They were trying to make the plot deep without focusing on the Power Rangers too much, which doesn't work in all cases. But the thing is, it was working just fine with Nadira. With that. And that could have been enough. Like, making him turn himself in because the one thing he cares about is his daughter. I don't mind that as much. But trying to, you know, wipe away his mutation and make him a good guy in the team up with the Wild Force, that was the glitch. Ben. That's the problem. That was the problem. But yeah, it's just, both these shows are very, very good shows. Not arguing that like at all no god but no these are great shows i'm going to end up giving it to time ranger yeah because just everybody got something everybody got something but i i'm giving it to time ranger in that aspect but if you want more if you didn't want the things that they got in time ranger you were more focused on the red and pink thing and all of that you will like time force better because in that team up with wild force there's so much more resolve. And I get that. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's just. I, I just really like Time Ranger just because of the fact that we got that sense of finality. We got that sense of finality. To a degree, we got that yeah, sense of like, finality. Well, of course. And, you, you know, we got more of that in uh, the Wild Force team. But, but at the same time, it's just going between these two, the things they tried to do with Rancic and what they didn't do with two of the main, you know, actual Time Force members, just. I don't know. It, it felt a little bit underwhelming to me like i still really love time force but after watching time ranger and seeing what could have gone into the actual show itself i wouldn't have to get it and i understand yet. that usually power rangers are a good 10 episodes shorter than sentai i get that and things have to be cut but i don't know i felt like they could because they cut the whole pink going ape shit on monster and almost killing it didn't they they didn't, but they shortened it and made it different because of the fact that, you know, she didn't have a pass with the monster. So so they they cut the dead family from the Pink Ranger thing. They cut that. So they, like, they cut stuff from everybody. I felt like some things shouldn't have been cut. Also, they, gave, they showed us the things that changed in the future in Time Ranger. Her family came back to life. I can't tell you that. Why? <laughs> Yeah, if if you haven't seen both of these shows, go watch them. They're both they're great. both great. They're and then after great. you watch Time Force, watch Link Kara's History of Power Rangers for Time Force because that's still one of our favorites. Yeah, this is Katie. I, I like, like Katie. Katie. But yeah, that's another episode in comparison. Join us next time as we'll be doing Gal Ranger versus Wild Force. Spoiler alert: Gal Ranger is not going to win. <laughs> but yeah. Please it will win in one episode, and I won't tell you which one. <laughs> go ahead, like our Facebook page. Follow like, us on Twitter. Us like, on Twitter. Subs- like the like videos. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We will see you guys. Put a next comment. Week. Yeah, put a comment. What do you like better, Time Ranger or Time Force? If you've seen both. Yeah, we always like to hear what you say. Yeah, 
And if you have more, if you have more Photoshop pictures of making Mark Marcus a Vogue cover, which by the way, somebody sent me on that Twitter on Twitter, fucking amazing. He's giving you poses. Please, made my day. Oh, God. we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.